Hi team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we are going to discuss about the thin line difference between SSO and Federated Identity Management. I have seen a lot of people get confused with this. So let's understand in phases. Let's understand the first point. When we are talking about single sign-on, single sign-on basically means user is basically in one domain. Okay, user is basically in one domain and he able to access the resource of the same domain. But this time you don't need to remember the username and password of all the resources. Let's take an example. So we have a user, he log in and he want to take a print. So for the print, you don't need to remember the printer username and password. Or you want to access a particular server or you want to access a particular desktop. You don't need to remember the username and password. So with the help of his own credentials, he can able to uh, log into that particular resources. So once he log in to the domain, within that domain, he can able to access all the resources depending upon the access without any username and password. The reason of introducing this concept is that because as a user, it is very difficult for me to remember the username and password of multiple resources. That is why login once and based on that you can able to access the n number of resources within a domain. Another use case of the single sign on we have is Gmail. The best example Gmail, gmail.com. So what you do, you log into the gmail.com, right? So once you log into the gmail.com, then does it ask for the password if you try to open drive.google.com? Does it ask for the password when you open doc.google.com? So you authenticate once. And based on that, you can able to access n number of services of Gmail. So that is an example of SSO. So Gmail is a perfect example of SSO where the user log into Gmail and within that particular domain, he can able to access all the resources. So you don't need to remember the username and password. On the other side, we have a federated identity management. Federation, the word itself basically say that group of company, group of entity. So now what happened, user part of one domain, okay, but access the resource of other domain. I will tell you the reason why they introduced this concept. For example, we have an office in Delhi. Okay, so I'm talking about the era when we're using our desktop as a concept. Okay, so during that time, you know, I was logging to my desktop. I was checking my emails. So for the office meeting, I have to fly to uh, Australia. So Australia has a separate company, different company. And now when I move to Australia, I want to check my emails. I can only log into my domain, which is part of my desktop, which is in Delhi. But now I'm in Australia, I want to log in to the desktop. So there is a trust between the two domains. So I'm using a resource of a other domain, but as a user, I'm a part of other domain. So you're getting a point. So here, the the desktop is a part of one domain which is called australia.com and I am a user who part of india.com. So india.com user accessing a resource which part of the australia.com resource. But in this case authentication is passed by the australia.com to india.com only. So when I log into the desktop I can see username password and I have option to select the domain. So I selected my india.com I enter my credentials it will send to the uh, australia.com server from australia.com server it basically send the request to india.com and india.com will verify and he give the assurance to the australia.com he is my user only and then australia.com will give the access. So the best use case of the uh, federation is basically is when you're using your gmail credential to log in the booking.com definitely booking.com is not owned by gmail right so you open booking.com you book the hotels when you go for a selection of uh, uh, dates and all that when you select the hotel when you move to the payment and all that they say login with id so they're giving you two options either login with your registered id which if you create an account on booking.com or the second option is basically login with the gmail id so you log in with the gmail id so what happens is when you select login with gmail id it redirects to the gmail portal where you enter your username and password then gmail is basically provide the necessary information to booking.com okay and through that i'm able to log into booking.com so this is the example of federation do let me know how do you find this video and uh, before we wind up i want to discuss one live example see if i'm at my home okay based on my dad name and all that i can ask anything okay because my dad influence is there in the house so that is called single sign on but now what happened is i went to uh, i went outside and within the society there is a uh, shop is there and uh, i went to the shop and say i need a toffee so shopkeeper said that where is the money so i just told hey i am a dad uh, i am a basically a son of mr this so you can take a money from him. oh okay you are son of him so here what happened dad has a authority in the society okay so i am a i am a son of my dad but able to access the resource of the other provider so that is the example we have so shopkeeper is a service provider 
okay my dad is a identity provider so that identity has been used and based on that i was able to access my shopkeeper resources so this is all from my side do let me know how do you find this video and i will looking forward for more comments from your side and which help me to motivate me to make more content like that thank you so much good day bye